My name is Dylan. I'm the lead programmer and captain of FTC Team 18438 Wolfpack Mucken. Today, I will be teaching you how to create and use our new simplified movement system. After PowerPlay Worlds, we released a video explaining our custom movement system from that season. While that movement system worked really well, it was extremely complicated, and we understand that it is a system that most teams simply don't have the time or skill that Caden had to design that system. And we found in center stage that Caden's code was so complicated that troubleshooting issues with it could take more time than it was worth. Because of this, during the offseason, we designed a much simpler system that could be implemented by teams at all levels, that also has the effectiveness to score reliable, high-scoring autos, and when paired with sensors, can even use fail-safes. Today, I will be showing you how to make a simple go-to-position PIDF-based movement system. The first thing you need for this system is localization. This can be done with odometry pods, a SparkFun optical tracking odometry system, or April tags. We recommend using odometry pods paired with GoBuilda's pinpoint odometry computer, and if you have the resources, pairing this with April tags, although in testing we found that just odometry pods is good enough for most autos. We won't be going over localization in this video, but there are plenty of resources out there for how to do it, and GoBuilda pinpoint and SparkFun make it super easy to get the position if you're a robot. This system works by essentially creating driver-oriented mechanism code and controlling it with a set of three PIDs instead of controller input. You'll have one for heading, one for forward movement, and one for strafing. If you haven't used a PID before, Control-Alt-FTC has a great tutorial, links in the description. I recommend making your PIDs in a separate class. Next, we make our go-to-position method. You'll want to pass in four doubles, target X, target Y, target heading, and speed. Then, update your localization so that we are using the most up-to-date data on the location of your robot. Then create a vector 2D called drive vector. It takes in two doubles. The first one should be your target X minus the current X, which you should get from your odometry. The second one is your target Y minus the current Y. Then make another vector 2D and make it equal to drive vector rotated by the current heading. Then create a double called input term. Set it to the correction from your heading PID, with the error being the target heading minus the current heading. Then create two more doubles called drive correction and strafe correction. Set them both to your driving PIDs, with the error being your rotated vectors Y for the strafe and X for the forward movement. Note that they will have different constants, so you'll have to tune them separately. Then, just set your motor powers like this. You'll notice it's similar to the mechanism equations that you might use for teleop code. If you don't understand how this works, there's a Desmos graph in the description that can help to visualize what we're doing here. Now you can start tuning. First, tune your heading PID. To do this, create an auto and run your go to position method in a loop. Make a time elapsed and reset it on start. If time elapsed.seconds is less than 2, run go to position to 0, 0 with a heading of 90 and a speed of 0 0.7. You can go up to 1 with the speed, but I only recommend doing this if you have a particularly heavy robot. We have a somewhat light robot, so we run it at 0.55 speed in competition, but we could go higher if we needed to make our autos faster. Then, if time elapsed is greater than 2, make a go new go to position, but set the heading to 270. If time elapsed is greater than 4, reset the timer. This should make the robot spin back and forth, stopping at 0 degrees and 180 degrees. From here, tune your heading PID and make sure your battery stays above 13 volts. Go back to Control-Alt-FTC if you need a tutorial. We also recommend using FTC Dashboard, which we have a section on in our Programming Libraries and Resources video if you've never used that before. Then, to tune the drive and strafe PIDs, do the same thing, but that set the heading to zero both times. Then, set X to 50 the second time. Also, increase the time elapsed thresholds to 5 and 10, but you may want it higher depending on how heavy your robot is. Then, tune the strafe PID. Then, tune the drive PID by doing the same thing, but with Y set to 50 and X set to 0. Before we get to writing autos, here are some common issues you might have. If your robot seems to be going the wrong way, change your PID corrections to be negative. You may need to try multiple combinations of positives and negatives. If your robot isn't moving, make sure you're running the op mode in a loop. If you get weird behaviors where the robot drives off in the correct direction and doesn't stop, make sure you aren't using any while loops except in the main except the main loop in your op mode. And make sure you don't use any timed out sleep commands. Also, make sure you're updating your localization every loop. If you have any other issues, check the pinned comment. We'll post any issues other teams have had with this system. If you don't see your issue, feel free to contact us on our website link in the description. We'd love to help you out.
To write an auto with this system, first you need to decide on a coordinate system. We prefer to use the corner of the field as our origin, but we've also seen people use the center of the field or their robot's starting position. Whatever you choose, start by setting your position to the center of the robot. The way you do this depends on how you do odometry, but your position should be the same instance that you reference in your movement. When you create your auto, start by making sure everything runs in a loop, like you would for a teleop. This can take some getting used to and means you can't use while loops or sleep commands. To get around this, you can use elapsedTime.seconds and use if statements to see if the time elapsed is greater or less than a certain amount of time. You can make this more efficient by making use of state machines, which we'll hopefully talk about in a future video. To set the target position of your robot, just write movement.goToPosition and then pass in your x, y, heading, and speed. This will result in the robot holding the position that you input. In addition to not having while loops or sleep commands in your auto, you also can't have them when you move your subsystems either. We recommend state machines for this as well, but it isn't an absolute requirement. And that's about it. You should be well on your way to coding fast, reliable autos. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us on our website. We'd love to meet with you if you need help with anything, from mechanical design to code to outreach. Also, check out our other videos. We're releasing a basic vision video alongside this one, and we've also made plenty of other videos that can help you set your team up for success in FTC. Thanks for watching.